All right, what's up, everybody? We are here. GMA Community Cup starting off the playoffs. The final four are going to battle it out for this title here in the summer of 2021. I am Jeff, joined here by Chaosix. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good for a Sunday evening, you know, always a strange mm -hmm. feeling, but feeling really, really hyped for these matchups. Um, not only this one that I get to cast with you, but also the, the second round, I feel like we're going to have uh, as many as six great, great games of League of Legends tonight. Starting things off, we will, of course, be going with Option 12 versus Phoenix. Uh, I guess I should actually say Phoenix versus Option 12. Phoenix is the higher seed. Mm -hmm. They will be on blue side. Starting off uh, in game one, option 12 will have blue side in game two, and if necessary, Phoenix will have blue side in game three. For those of you who might not be familiar, um, this is the GMA Gaming Community Cup. So there were six teams battling it out in a round robin throughout the season. Top four in terms of points made it to the playoff round, which is what we're starting right here tonight. The nightcap tonight will be Nine Lives against Blitzkrieg, who are the top seed and have been the top seed throughout most of the split. So that'll be an exciting one to stick around for if you're willing to stay up late. Want to also give a reminder that during the Community Cup, GMA Gaming has partnered with Feeding America. Feeding America is committed to making sure that people across the United States do not go hungry during the pandemic. Feeding America estimates that 42 million people in the country may struggle with hunger this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. This fundraiser, fundraiser excuse me, helps provide meals to people in need, and for every $1 donated, we get to provide one meal. So far, the GMA community has provided over 5,000 meals, and while that's incredible, there's always more that we can do. So if you're able, please contribute to this cause. It's very important. It's something I'm very proud to be involved with. Now to get back to the matter at hand, we have option 12 and Phoenix filling up our lobby currently. Looks like uh, the players are almost getting ready to go. Initial thoughts on this one, Chaos, because you've played against both of these teams. Uh, let's start with Phoenix since they're the higher seed. What do you see as, you know, sort of their strengths, their weaknesses? What do you expect them to do here in this series? I think all split, it's been the the bot lane show for Phoenix, uh, and I, I expect that to continue today. Um, they're going to try to get Alpha ahead. Uh, Peach, down on support, has been an absolute monster, um, and I, I don't expect that to, to stop. Um, I, I think they have a decent matchup into uh, Prowler Yuge, although Yuge has been also pretty, pretty consistent uh, at support, so um, be looking down there for sure. Awesome. And uh, as you can see, we are into champ select now. Our players are ready, assembling quick graves band. I assume that's aimed over at Great Beard of Odin, who has been playing that in mid quite a bit to some great, great effect. And Zyra is basically a perma ban against Peach, who you just shouted out a moment ago. Um, any other predictions that you might have for this first ban phase, Chaosix? Um, well, Zach, I guess. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, God, what else is on the table? Maybe another support ban? Um, or Alonzi has been been uh, targeted. Um, oh, Morgana, sure. Um, I could see like Warwick going. Um, Alonzi's kind of known for his Warwick there. Uh, maybe Gregosaurus Annie uh, has, has been kind of a menace. Yeah, if you, uh, for those of you who might not be aware, GMA also runs a podcast on Wednesday evenings, and Greatbeard of Odin himself was on that podcast earlier this week, uh, talking a little bit of trash about Gregosaurus, saying that he expected Gregosaurus to play safe, expected him to not really want to get in his face and brawl. Um, Annie is a champion that, I wouldn't say Annie's a brawler, but she definitely gets in her face, but only in moments when she really wants to. Uh, you see the Akali ban coming out that's definitely aimed at Greatbeard of Odin. They don't want to go against that. Were there mm -hmm. any particular surprises as we see the Sejuani come out in the first pick? Um, not really so far. Uh, following up the third ban with Caitlyn makes a lot of sense. Uh, Alpha has been popping off on Caitlyn, so not surprised Absolutely. there. Uh, Senna Viger bot lane, also not surprising. Uh, huge put up a huge, huge game against us, actually, uh, two weeks ago on on or sorry it was last week uh, on vegar so that's gonna be a really strong lane 
Yeah, yeah, I was uh, watching that game, and that was pretty scary. I, I love the diversity that Senna has brought to this game, especially when it's a fasting Senna as opposed to feasting, because mm -hmm. it just unlocks the support to be able to do so many different things. And Vigar is certainly one of those supports that is happy to take that CS and happy to scale up. You do see the Annie picked for Gregor Soros Rex. I assume, I don't think that's a flex that could go to Peach in the bot lane, uh, but good call on that one, Chaosix, for yeah. uh, seeing that that one was coming through. Jin being hovered right now. We're down to two seconds one, and it is locked in. I don't know if I've seen Alpha play Jin this split. I know I have, or excuse me, this Community Cup. I know I have in the past, but... Um, that's that's a little yeah. bit of an interesting twist to me right now. I was just thinking that. Um, I really like Jin as a champion. I think he's pretty strong right now. So not sure how he'll do in the into the this bot lane, uh, Senna Viger, But so he doesn't have dashes or anything, right? So if he gets caught in the baby cage, um, he's gonna have a bad time. Yeah, that's a really good point. Vigar is not a champion that it's easy to play immobile champions against. Um, Jin obviously uh, very frequently builds the Gale win. Force. So that could be something that comes out, but that won't be for a while. And even then, if you're using that to just dodge the event horizon, it's not really optimal usage of mm -hmm. that item. Uh, Godzilla looks like he's going to get that Wukong, which he was a terror on in the last week of the regular season last week. And I believe is just one of his most potent champions in general. Yeah, I think it's one of his favorites, uh, if I recall correctly. And then Set Brand. Okay, so Interesting. they don't... Yeah, so they don't want Eternal playing the set, and they don't want Peach playing the brand. I understand uh, both of those, or that mm -hmm. logic in general. I was going to say logics, that's not a word. And mm -hmm. we'll see what the last band coming out from Phoenix will be. I wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe a Ziggs. Yep, okay. Oh no, the audio delay might rob me of my credit there. But I did, <laughs> I was thinking that before. You were everyone. going for it. <laughs> So we won't have the artillery coming out from Great Beard of Odin with that Ziggs. And Diana, that... Now, I know Diana is most frequently played in the jungle, but knowing how Great Beard of Odin plays, do you think that that could potentially be flexed to mid, given his play style? It could be. I don't think they will, but... Okay. You never know. Um, I feel like Diana into Annie would be an absolute... Like, just a terrible lane. Sure. <laughs> um, Diana does need to get a little bit closer uh, to, to CS, and Annie, Annie will just poke you out, get the stuns off. Sure. Fair I enough. imagine they're saving last pick for Great Beard of Odin here. Now, that's always curious to me because if I'm option 12, I was pretty sure that that Annie was going mid this whole time. So I'm surprised that you would leave, you know, mid lane as your counter pick, given that you already uh, have that information. That is true. Um, considering Annie could be a flex, and I guess still could be a flex, really I not guess. sure yeah, uh, that's between fair. between Annie Lux. Um, you know, maybe they just wanted to to be safe with it. Um, you know, maybe maybe he is playing Diana and feels that Annie is an okay matchup for him. That's fine. Uh, I personally don't agree, but <laughs> you know, I guess we'll see we'll see how the swaps go here. Yeah, looks like it it might be uh, Diana mid. All right, so we're going to see something a little bit fresh here in the mid lane from Great Beard of Odin. We'll see what goes on between Peach and Gregorsaurus Rex with this Annie and Lux. I would be very surprised if Gregorsaurus gives up this Annie. I've uh, been playing this game with him for a long time, and Annie was his first main, and it was probably over a decade oh, ago yeah. that he started playing this game go. and was playing Annie. So Annie's been changed a little bit throughout the years, but not that much. Only for the better, actually. Like the the new Annie shield gives move speed. Oh, it's a so super good. good change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it does look like as we're getting down to about 15 seconds, to choose the loadout. It will be Gregor Soros Rex on this Annie, which means Princess Peach will be piloting Lux in the bot lane. Lux Jin. That seems like a, a pretty annoying lane to go against. Mm -hmm. Could get snared up for about two, three seconds straight. But at the same time, Senna and Vigar have the same potential to lock you up continuously yeah definitely gonna be a game of who lands cc first um you know lux lux can can really lay down the cc from a, a greater distance than, than viger can but if if you get stuck in the cage again you're kind of committed to flashing mm -hmm. at that point um or you know putting on your, your dancing shoes um but it's really not easy uh because of how small the cage is um it could be very explosive maybe they'll just handshake it 
Um, you know, just kind of throw some skill shots out here and there, but but mostly just try to stay out of each other's faces um, until they hit hit their relative power spikes. We'll see. Yeah, and one thing we didn't talk about yet is Sig Tau Eternal getting uh, Old Faithful Mal- Malphite up in the top lane. That's always been a staple of his champion pool, I believe. And, you know, it's it's not surprising at this point if Sig Tau Eternal falls a little bit behind in lane, but Malphite is a champion that can just instantly make up for any kind of, you know, marginal or even moderate CS advantage with that ultimate capability. And we know that Sig Tau Eternal is one who is not afraid to give up some lane priority in exchange for making a play across the map absolutely not he's been a really good weak side uh top player this entire split um even the last few splits he's been playing uh and i think the malphite wukong uh matchup i'm not too familiar with it but i imagine malphite will have an okay time Mm -hmm. uh both being melee and malphite you know being malphite uh, (laughs) with that passive shields can be really really helpful um for staying healthy in that lane yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like if you're Malphite, you, you see an opportunity to just, well, if Malphite is in your wheelhouse and you see an opportunity to go up against a melee physical damage champion, you're saying, okay, I'll take that handshake and yeah. uh, we'll see what happens at 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Idol in chat saying he's he thinks Phoenix's draft is a little odd. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely go, 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 right? It's uh, yes. it's everybody pile on and press R. And whereas I do think that there's more diversity to option 12s, um, they they can go, 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 obviously, but they can also kite back pretty effectively, I think, with the Senna and the mm-hmm. Vigar. So I do think that Phoenix has maybe less ways that it, that they can approach fights, but they have so many ways that they can start a fight if they want. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be just the Malphite or just the Sejuani. You know, they can even start a fight with Jin Ult just across a lane, across the river. And, uh, you know, someone else will get in range to continue it. So if you're option 12, if you fall behind early, you've got to be really careful about your positioning and your vision. Yeah. I do have to say, I think I favor uh, option 12's comp in the late game. Uh, the later this game goes, you know, the more Viger Center are going are gonna, to uh, scale up. And that's going to be hard hard for uh, Phoenix to play around. I know Malphite's unstoppable with his ult, so he can get through the baby cage. But if he leaves the rest of his team behind, he's just going to get melted. Now, how do you feel? Well, first of all, we're into the skin showdown here. Let's see how that's we right. feel about these skins. Two projects on the side two of prestige. Phoenix. Two prestige. Oh, Look at the two blade. prestige. Look at that. <laughs> really flexing here. Five skins on each side, which I always appreciate. Um, I kind of like option 12 here. I feel like... Even the non-prestigious ones kind of have like some gold theme going on, except astronaut. Yeah, there. yeah. I'll definitely I'll give it to the wallet team for sure. <laughs> uh, option option twelve. Yeah, I, I like the bling. Looks great. Similar colors. Uh, shout out to the top side of Phoenix though. I like yeah, the, that, uh, that the project well, and old god. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. Super good. Actually, super two galaxy projects, yeah. Annie kind of fits in with that color scheme as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I don't hate I don't hate either team, but yeah, option twelve gets the edge for me. Now, one thing here, uh, the option twelve bot lane has both gone teleport. We saw them do that last week, I believe. Uh, but last week yeah. it was kind of not that critical of a game for them. I believe they were guaranteed playoffs already. Uh, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? Uh, well, considering they pulled it on us, um, it was interesting. Uh, dealing with because I think they double teleported on one of our, our plays uh, pretty early on and you know we kind of recognized that they had the TP but we didn't fully respect it and I believe we got wiped in that team fight or at least it was pretty close um, there's a lot of surprise that can happen you know if, if a, a Viger te- teleports in instead of like Senna sure. or Kong um, yeah the way you, you approach know, it the way you prepare for yeah. that channel to finish yeah it also allows them to split um split push with three members uh which is which is going to be super good for them especially if you put uh Vigar in a solo lane and allow him to just farm up with that q get the stacks going so then when he does teleport in he's gonna hit hard now that's a little scary though right if you if you were to put huge in a side lane by himself you know i know he has the event horizon but if uh if say gregor rex and sig tau eternal come down for huge i don't think he's getting out of that no matter what he does with the event probably horizon. not yeah 
Always it's definitely scary. scary. Yeah, always scary, uh, in my opinion, to send a squishy, immobile character down to a, a yeah. solo lane by itself. But, you know, that just, I guess, comes down to vision control, understanding. It how does, can yeah. Go. Depends where the wave is, too, right? Like, if, if it you put him in a wave that's pushed, pushed to you, it's going to be a lot easier of course. for him to farm up. Well, no level one shenanigans, it looks like, from either team. I understand it. First game of the playoffs, nobody wants to yeah. uh, throw right away. Looks like it will be split starts, though. So we'll have Alonzi starting up on the top side of the jungle, whereas Slayton will be on the bot side. Alonzi likes to do some some really cheeky level two, level three ganks, um, especially towards mid. Um, I wonder if he's going to look for a Diana. She doesn't really have a dash. You know, she has to go in. She can't go yeah. out. Um, so I wonder if he'll he'll make a pit stop there when he hits level two or three here. Maybe after Raptors, um, we'll just have to see. Otherwise, you know, he's going to be looking bot or just full clear. And huge getting bullied out a little bit early on. Looks like Prowler stuck around to leash a little longer for Slayton than uh, than Yuge did. So a little early damage. Had to chug a potion early, but looks like he's fine for now. Also has uh, gone into the biscuits. Early level two though for Peach and Alpha, they get a lot of damage down on Yuge. Has the flash, Ooh. Peach with the flash answer. Dude. That's a quick first blood. We talked about the bot lane of Phoenix and they are flexing early on. Alpha one more. Oh my goodness, what a start for Team Phoenix. That was huge. Uh, I was just looking at experience bars before that before that started and I noted that uh, Prowler was at like 20% experience to level two and Peach and Alpha both hit, both hit two at the same time on that minion, they immediately pulled the trigger on it and it, it panned out for him. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you, you do have to leash for your jungler. It's just part of the game, but it's so difficult when you have to give up lane priority like that and the other team, especially, you know, with so much CC like Jin and Lux have, as there's that early gank actually that you called out from Alonzi, gets in onto Great Beard of Odin, will let him go. He flashes away, that's still a successful gank though. You called that out earlier. Yeah. So a lot of aggression of coming out from Phoenix early on. But to get back to what I was saying, yeah, it's so oppressive when you have to give up that level two early on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they paid the price for it. You know, uh, Slayton's a little bit safer, but double kill bot lane, That's that lane isn't going to get any easier uh, for option 12 here. Um, and Alonzi, you know, getting the flash on mid as well. He'll be back. Uh, Odin's going to be in a really precarious position because if he gets caught by a, a stray... An EQ with a stun attached to it, and and Alonzi is anywhere in the neighborhood. He's just gone. Yeah, it's it's so tricky to play against Annie because it's just such easy CC. There's nothing you mm -hmm. can do about it if she's got that stun charged up and just cues you. You just watch that slow fireball float at you. Yeah. Knowing that you're literal be point in trouble. Click. Yeah, that's a rough one. We saw um, the bot lane of Prowler and Huge coming up, trying to harass Alonzi away from that scuttle crab, but Alonzi able to. Might it away. Gregosaurus could be in trouble here. Nice flash away from Slayton. Returns a little bit of damage, but Gregosaurus is pretty low on mana. Does have the teleport advantage, so he has a free back, essentially, compared to Great Beard of Odin, who does still have the Ignite available, so that little bit of extra damage could come into play. Alpha and Peach just sort of dominating this lane right now, understandably, given how that early game went. And Alonzi is back. He flashes, actually. They get double sundown, but I don't know if they have the damage. Ignite comes in. Gregosaurus has no flash. He might just die here. One more auto attack. No, the stun from Alonzi comes out. Great Bird Loden can't get in range, and he goes Ooh. down. A tragedy for the mid laner of option 12. Gets ganked again. Can't quite turn it around. Great patience from Gregosaurus to just walk that out. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I was talking about. He showed up mid again. Um, you know, Diana without flash, he had to go in. Almost got the trade on Gregosaurus, but um, you know, un unfortunately, like, he couldn't make that happen. Uh, I think it was closer than it needed to be, though. I think Alonzi missed W on, or at least half of W on Odin. Um, so it, it, the outplay potential was there, just, yeah, couldn't do it. It looked interesting. I'd have to go back and watch, but... I don't know if the minions ever aggroed to Gregosaurus, right? and I think that might have been enough if it had, but I think Alonzi went in yeah. first, and so he got the minion aggro. Yeah. It was a really smart play by them. And they were rewarded with the uh, Ocean Drake immediately afterwards, so... Oh, another snare good, good goes play. down, and Prowler's just going to have to try to be spooky and walk away. Takes a ton of damage on the way out, though. This bot lane... 
of Phoenix continues to flex their muscles. You shouted out Peach and Champ Select, and rightfully so. Yeah, uh, those Jin fourth shots, they hurt. <laughs> um, they absolutely carried the fight level two, and, and you know he's just got a few more items now. They're gonna not gonna hit any less hard. Um, they need to try to stay away from him if they can, but Peach wow. making it absolutely difficult to to do that, um, hitting every Lux Q. Peach is a little bit low on mana, so maybe that makes you a little bit less afraid. Event Horizon does oh. catch on to Alpha, but the shield from Princess Peach will basically minimize that damage. Yeah, Viger, you know, also support Viger, I should say. Uh, no damage yet. Sure. Not too much, anyways. Yeah. Without without the uh, ultimate, he doesn't have too much kill pressure. It's mostly just a stun bot. Just the Doran's ring so far. I like that from Princess Peach right there. I don't know if uh, it was intentional. Actually, Slayton jumps in onto Alpha. Still, the flash is available, and he gets away pretty easily. Yeah. That's uh, that's really a testament, I think, to the dominance in this bot lane so far. The fact that Alpha and Peach have dominated this lane, got that 2v2 kill early on, and Alpha still had all the summoners available. Didn't even need to use them previous. For sure. Um, hopefully, Slayton tries to look bot again, because I think shutting down bot is going to be um, very important for option 12 this game. Now let me take a quick look here. So we've got a Cloud Drake that will be spawning second. Um, so that means we'll have either Mountain or Infernal Soul in this game. Good. Something <laughs> different. Yeah. Not a big fan of Cloud Drake, but... Or I, Cloud Soul, rather. Sure, but, sure. Yeah. Um... If it's Infernal, uh, and assuming Phoenix can can keep Drake control, that's that's going to be devastating. Oh, I'm sure they'd love that, yeah. At the same yeah. time, I think... Uh, oh, actually, Slayton is ghosting in. Aggregator still has no Flash, but had Alonzi and Sigtow Eternal as backup. So really nice job from Phoenix to cover their Flashless mid laner there. And that's Ghost Burn by Slayton. Mm -hmm. Importantly, uh, Gregosaurus pushed off of his wave here. He's going to miss out on some experience. Um, that's going to be fine for him. Uh, the wave seems to be pushing in his direction, so he can go catch that. Oh, in goes Slayton. He does steal away the Rift Herald, and I think he will be able to pick up the eye. Got stunned on top of it, so he does get it down. Great Beard of Odin goes in with a big ult, and Godzilla with the Cyclone. Big play from option 12. They take away the Rift Herald and get two kills on top of it. Slayton is cracked. That was an absolutely insane play. I cannot believe he got that smite off. I didn't think they'd go for it, but boy, he did, and, and yeah, they're gonna get a lot of plates on mid here. That, that's a huge turn. I think it was down to 60 HP, and uh, and Sladen picked it up. Looks like smite is still available for Alonzi, so uh, maybe just not expecting Sladen to be there, not expecting to have to use the smite, although it looks like they have a ward over the wall. Meanwhile, Prowler getting taken really low in the bot lane. Alpha and Peach continuing to assert their dominance down there, but the gold is back in favor of option 12 after that big play in the top side river. Yeah, top side of uh, option 12 coming up huge, that uh, Rift Herald steal. Um, meanwhile, you can see the difference uh, in experience for, for Prowler really, you know, showing its effect here. Uh, he's level five, uh, the rest of the lane is level six, and that, that just makes it harder to survive. Um, you know, Lux Jin all uh, coming in. If he gets if he gets hit by a Lux Q even once, like even more dangerous because he can't respond with the shield from his ult. So Lanzi hanging out down in the bot lane, but looks like he is thinking that the jig is up. Yeah, looks like he's gonna. Well, they're picking the Drake, which will be up in 15 seconds. Obviously, if you're Phoenix, you'd love to keep stacking these. And Peach is just waiting in that brush, so hoping that Prowler or Yuge come to try to face check and defend that trade. Godzilla dashes in, gets some damage down onto Sigtow Eternal up in the top lane. And Slayton is coming down too. Graveyard of Odin actually jumps in, gets the ult down onto Gregosaurus, that's a lot of damage. Oh, Gregosaurus just barely gets away from the Senna ult. He will stay alive, but all of a sudden, Phoenix really loses priority over that Drake. There's the Event Horizon, they catch on to Peach. The Lux is really squishy, stays alive just barely so far. 
in goes Slayton with the ultimate, and he does get down Peach, but trades his own life, so there's no jungler left for option 12, but Great Beard of Odin is here because Gregosaurus was pushed out earlier, Sigtau Eternal teleported down, but just to his death, and option 12 continues to be on the front foot in the last few minutes, they should get the second drink, and have opened up a sizable gold lead, Great Beard of Odin might have gone too far here though, there goes Tibbers, and there goes the Diana, and all of a sudden now, momentum swings back in the favor of Phoenix, Prowler's really, really low, red buff applied, Alonzi, just needs one more attack. They get him down. And now I think Phoenix can just turn for this Drake. What a back and forth fight. That was crazy. Uh, first of all, really good teleport by Eternal there to, to help secure kills. Um, coming with the ult, the hot Malphite ult. But oh, no, option Slayton's 12, earned it. Yeah, Slayton is here with full health. Alonzi at about 40% health. So he has to make sure he stays alive. Has to dash out of the pit. Has the blast going to get back over. I'll see if he goes for the seal. He gets back in. He doesn't get it. Slayton two for two on clutch smites in the last couple of minutes. And now Godzilla's in with the Cyclone. His teleport just became available. Uses it in perfect timing. Peach gets the light finding out. Should get away. But it's a double kill for Godzilla in addition to Slayton taking away that Drake. Yeah, you can see the greed on both sides. Um, first, from Great Beard of Odin after they won that fight, walking into no vision on the back side of the pit and getting deleted. And then Alonzi going back over trying for the smite steal. I appreciate him trying it, but Prower he was goes low down health. The bot lane as well. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but just got oh, to have this air combo. Huge has basically no mana, but I think the bot lane of option 12 has overstepped now. Godzilla is still down in this quadrant of the map. Alpha's just going to walk away. They're going to let Alpha go, actually. I think they might have been able to get both, but they're just going to go for Peach instead. The Lux, unfortunately, tries to do as much as she can, but not quite enough damage to trade Huge back. Raven of Odin dashes in onto Sick Tower turn who is in the mid lane. Gregosaur is coming up in the mid lane, so Graven of Odin has to be a little respectful. Does have flashback available. Sigtau Eternal, though, will probably have to go back to base here. But if you what want to finish your that. thought earlier... Oh, I I don't even remember. So much has happened now. <laughs> uh, just non-stop action on both sides. They're really running into each other. But I'd love to 12. see it, though. Uh, yeah, I have to give them credit. They they have really come out on the front foot of the last couple of plays. They've been extended plays. They've been wild plays with some members dying and then respawning and coming back to basically the same fight. But through it all, they've come out to about a two and a half thousand gold lead and got that Drake. Yeah, uh, notice they're they're about two point four k up on Phoenix right now, and you know they are the better late game team. Wait. Prowler taken really, really low, but they can't quite get the last damage. Yuge is exhausted, so he won't quite be able to finish off Princess Peach. Another light binding. Oh, but Yuge does snipe down Princess Peach in response. Alpha going in. He misses the deadly flourish. I don't think he has enough. He oh, goes no. down. Oh, my goodness. Option 12, even in the bot lane. They're taking everything now. Uh, I just have two words to say, Bandbiker. This man is just <laughs> crazy on the champion. Yeah, this Senna Vigar combo got 2v2 killed early on, but ever since then they have looked really, really in control of their own destiny. Alonzi camping in the mid lane again. They might actually catch Slayton. They could turn this around, although Slayton has a two level advantage, so maybe it's not worth it. Yeah, Alonzi just has to run away. Gregosaurus uses the timbers just to try to defend his jungler, but now Grapevine Roden gets in and takes down Gregosaurus. Slayton gets away with the ultimate. Eternal is here to cover Alonzi's exit. Godzilla, though, could go in. There's the clone, there's the dash, there's the cyclone, has one more cyclone to use. Alonzi, nice blast cone, and Ooh. that should get him to safety. No flashes available from anyone else. So a really clutch blast cone there from Alonzi. And Les Grapebeard Voden goes all the way around the turret. Oh boy, Alonzi, yeah. I think, shouldn't have channeled that recall there. Could have maybe kept yeah. walking, but will go down under the turret, unfortunately. Godzilla should live through that last turret shot. Oh, Odin taking huge shots, though. He'll be fine. Oh, teleport uh, actually coming out. 12. Yeah, Gregor Source yeah. is teleporting back. They're trying to salvage something from this situation, but I think everyone will be able to get away. That was a really good blast going there for option 12. If that wasn't there, uh, that's a double kill for Annie for sure. And you saw Peach roam all the way up trying to make something yeah. happen there. Alpha in the bot lane. It's amazing how it felt like Phoenix was in such strong control of this bot lane for so long, but... Huge is actually at a level advantage over Alpha. Yeah, a uh, couple of huge plays around the, the Drake, and option 12 are, are not only in it, but in it's pretty commanding lead for this time. 
Oh, um, Prowler teleports in. There's yeah. that support teleport. Not something we're expecting. And Peach gets destroyed by Yuge on the backside of it. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Like, the, the plays you can make with that, people don't expect it because it's not normal, right? You don't exactly. usually see two bot lane, but... Oh, oh Alpha no. gets hit as well. Oh, and no. just gets destroyed. The Dawning Shadow gets the snipe. And the tables have turned 180 degrees. Gregosaurus and Alonzi trying to come back, but I don't think they'll be able to pick anything up here. Uh, yeah, option 12's bot lane is unlocked. Uh, this is... Uh, what they needed to do to win, I think, um, and they're they're doing a really great job of it. If they continue this pace, they'll it'll be a free win for them. All of a sudden, it's over a 5,000 gold lead. Three Bear Bowden dashes in. Alonzi able to flash away from the event horizon, and they will escape just by the skin of their teeth. But you see just the power that Option 12 has right now. That bot lane, they've always been quick to roam up. Princess Peach trying to get a snipe on a prowler, but not quite enough damage. I, yeah, I, I'm flabbergasted. This, it's just been all action. I can't think straight. Well, let me Seems ask you, like as every... a player, is uh, yeah. something that I've noticed is it looks like Option 12 are probably going to be able to get this Drake for free. There's no laser available for Peach. Godzilla actually dashes in. The action never stops. I can't ask my question. Peach goes down. He's only worth 176 gold at this point. So just getting farmed right now. Godzilla picks up another kill, and they get the Drake. Um, but what I was going to ask you is, I've noticed that Option 12's bot lane seems, at least in my opinion, more willing to roam than uh, other bot lanes that I've seen. Is that something that you take note of as an opposing player, or is that something that maybe I'm overstating? No, I do, uh, especially as a, as a mid laner. You know, it's very easy for bot lane to just randomly show up in my lane. And in, in our games against Option 12 last week, uh, Prowler would just randomly walk into my lane, <laughs> start throwing abilities at me, and it would really throw me off, you know, because I'm in the middle of, like, CSing or something. Maybe I'm half health, and, you know, it just kind of puts me on the back foot. Um, you know, maybe I have to use some defensives or something. Uh, it's really annoying uh, when bot lane is really good at roaming. Mm -hmm. Just gives you one more thing to have to think about. It is. Yeah. And then the, you could say, get the jungler on the other side, and man, it's just so hard to deal with. At this point, we uh, haven't done a stacks check yet. Yuge is at 134 stacks on his Vigar, Senna at 49. So, uh, Prowler not quite at the pace that I believe he was at when we saw this lane last week, but here comes Slayton. They don't care about pace right now, they're just pushing the pace of the game. Princess Peach able to flash away, but Dawning Shadow will just zone him away. No way to get back yeah. to the turret. Great Beard of Odin was there as well, but wasn't even needed. Eternals here goes in with the Unstoppable Force, but I don't think that this is a good choice for Phoenix anymore. This fight seems lost. Eternals gonna go down. Big stun from Gregosaurus, but Great Beard of Odin will... No, he won't oh. get away. I think Tippers actually killed him with the immolate, or excuse me, the uh, the aura around that bear was able to do the last pick of damage, but this is still advantageous for option 12. Godzilla goes in with the cyclone. Nice flash away from Alpha. Under the turret, Godzilla goes down. That's a big shutdown going over to the Jin, but Alonzi is going to get taken down on the backside. Gregosaurus as well. So overall, I believe that's a 4 for 2 for option 12. Still a really, really great play for them, although a lot of gold went into Alpha's pockets. Yeah, that was uh, the Gregosaurus kill on Greatbeard of Odin. I think it was Ludens that did it. Maybe maybe Tibbers finished it off, but Ludens hit really hard there. Princess Peach, oh no, went for the laser no. again, but just not enough damage. Got caught by the Event Horizon, but able to escape as Prowler's last auto attack was not quite enough. Peach stepping forward again, and this okay. Rift Herald is going to hit for a big chunk. Eternal's here, but they know that there is no oh, Malphite no. Ultimate, so you're not too afraid of this champion at this point. Uh, yeah, like, what can we say? Option 12 is just flexing their wallets uh, on, on Phoenix here. It seems every every team fight they're at least getting return kills, uh, if not getting more in return. Um, full objective control here, wards everywhere uh, in Phoenix's jungle. This is going to be really hard for them to come back from. Yeah, I think it's, you know, we saw Eternal got a decent ult there. Gregosaurus hit, I believe, a three-person Tibbers, which normally is, is a really big play. But the damage just wasn't quite enough. And so it wasn't. Yeah. That's, as you said, the gold lead. Just when you're that far down, you, you can't make uh, dents in the opposition's health bars as much as you might expect. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's about their bot lane. Um, that's where most of their damage is. You know, Lux, uh, Jin, and 
you know, after they started just dying left and right bot lane, like, they just don't have the damage anymore. Uh, it's hard to get through the shields that, that Prowler can put out. Uh, the shields and the healing, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's kind of got something, you know, some some defensive that Alpha and Peach and, and Gregosaurus need to get through, and at this point, they just can't do it. Alonzi is sitting on a ward right now, so... Option 12 is completely aware of his positioning. Meanwhile, they all walk over the Scuttle Crab vision, though. So, everyone knows where everyone is right now. Ooh. Deadly Flourish doesn't quite catch. And you just just pushing for free in that bot lane. So, as you were saying, uh, you might go to a side lane, and I was worried about him, but apparently that was for naught, because he is completely fine down there. Might even take away a red buff for his trouble. I mean, at 6 and 1, I think he can pop pretty much everybody except maybe Eternal. Uh, maybe Alonzi as well at this point, but uh, that's a really dangerous Vigar, and he's going to be perfectly fine in a side lane. Yeah, 6, 1, and 6. Godzilla just baiting with that recall dashes right back in. Doesn't get a ton of damage down onto Eternal, but doesn't really take much in return either. Now there's a little bit more damage. Eternal chunk down to about 60% health, so Godzilla definitely winning these trades at this point. And mm -hmm. we've seen how potent he can be on this Wukong. You start to wonder if it's something that you have to take away from him. Yeah, uh, banning, banning Wukong, I think, is, is something nope. teams have been doing. Yeah, He's here he goes. He's going in for the solo kill. Sig Tau Eternal does have Unstoppable Force available. He might have to pop it. Oh, my goodness. He still had it available. But Godzilla, I think the damage is surprising Sig Tau Eternal there. Had the Unstoppable Force. Could have gotten away. Decided not to. And third grade goes over to the side of option 12. It will be a Mountain Soul. They're on Soul Point now. And to me, that would be... You know, you talked about the shields, the defensive capabilities. That would make yeah. it just even more impossible for Phoenix to yeah. ever pop somebody like they want to at the start of these fights. Yeah, uh, it definitely seems unwinnable now. With 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 that soul, it would be extra impossible. Like uh, they're they're just too strong right now. Um, back to top lane, you know, uh, Eternal not using ult. He really needs to respect the the six and one Wukong with Divine Sunderer. And I, now I think just finished uh, Black Cleaver. So um, Eternal cannot be in a lane with this Wukong. He's going to get melted. So who do you send to answer the Wukong? I mean, I don't think anyone can 1v1, but you yeah. can at least, you know, survive under turret, say. I mean, he might still be the best answer. Like, you could you could maybe make an argument for for Annie, um, you know, as, assuming Annie plays immediately under turret and just stuns Wukong as soon as he comes in. But like, yeah, it might Still it might just have to be Eternal at this point. Oh, they might catch on to Godzilla. They get oh. a lot of stuff down. Rooted forever. The clone, will it keep him alive? Cycloning away. Oh my god, he's still alive. Curtain call. Can they find him? Oh, he's out of vision right now. They do know. And Tibbers again nice. for the second time. Tibbers picks up a kill. Zigtown Turtle still has unstoppable force. Can he get it off before he dies? He actually opts to walk away. Binding from Prowler will disengage the situation for now. Will option 12 decide they want more? Oh, Prowler stepped forward there. Great of Odin with the Ooh. ultimate. Gets rooted up. Zigtown Turtle still has Unstoppable Force available. Okay. They haven't popped it yet. Oh my goodness, Great Beard of Odin. What a Zonia gets away from it and Eternal just trades his life. Alpha went down as well. And again, option 12 turned that around. Yeah, uh, Alpha got caught by Yuge while we were looking uh, top lane at, at Godzilla dying. And oh. that's what kind of started that whole thing off there. And Gregor Soros might get taken down, able to pop the stopwatch. But yeah, you see, even yeah. there, you, you catch out arguably the strongest member of option 12 right now. You kill him, but the the rest of the engage is still so heavily in favor of option 12, and that's that 10,000 gold lead. Yeah. I mean, it took... I think all five members were there for, for Phoenix to try to kill Godzilla. It took all of them, and they still lost Jin on the back end of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it. They're in a really tough position. And it was so huge that Godzilla got away with such a sliver of health because yeah. that sort of forced Alpha to use the curtain call, which then yes. obviously made him such a juicy target. Yeah. Yeah, and he bought enough time for his team to show up and clean up. Right now, we will have Mount... Actually, one more laser. Actually, they catch power, oh. so that's a nice kill. They get some shutdown gold. Went over to Peach, who is probably not the best person to get that gold, but also being on support Lux, it's not as bad as maybe other supports getting that shutdown gold would be. Yeah, I, I'd say it's not optimal, but honestly, being on Lux, like, you know, she's kind of the way they're winning these fights right now. Um, oh, I'd say fights. Get caught out. Yeah. There's Godzilla right. again. My He's goodness, gone. this man. 
just destroying Phoenix anytime he shows up. Great bit of Odin pops the ult. Okay. He will not catch onto Alpha, but just goes right to Alonzi instead. Alpha forced to run away from Godzilla. Eternal's here. He has got to be kind of respectful, though, because he's just waltzing through, and he might get taken out. Dawning Shadow comes out, and he's able to get away from that and get back under his turret. Another snare comes out from Peach. Godzilla, though, has the Merc Tread, so they weren't able to chain that with the Deadly Flourish of Jin. And now, option 12, they're moseying towards the Baron. Yeah, it should be free. They don't they don't have Smite for 10 seconds. There's too much damage. They'll be able to get that and back away. Um, back to what I was saying before. Um, and now I lost what I was saying before, so never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. Just watch Baron DK. Well, Phoenix does know what's happening. Gregosaurus and Eternal both have teleport, but you wonder if it's even worth going up there. No, nope, they're just no. going to let it go. But also, Mountain Soul, or excuse me, Mountain yeah. Soul Point is up in about 40 seconds. So, in my opinion, if you're Phoenix, you have to try to fight for something here. Yes. Oh, I remember what I was saying. Um, <laughs> Lux getting gold, I don't think, is the worst thing, because at this point, they're trying to look for picks. Hmm. Uh, and Lux, Lux's Q is, like, kind of your vector for that. Uh, so putting more gold on Deluxe is, is not the worst thing. Um, you know, they, they just have to try... Yeah, like like a pick there on Prowler would have been huge. Yeah, um, and once again, Eternal had the Unstoppable Force available. I understand maybe looking for a multi-person ult, but I think a pick just there. Actually, he goes oh. in now. Nice stopwatch from Yuke, though, and Great Beard of Odin. Everybody is just immune to everything for a moment. And in goes Godzilla on the backside, the re-engage from the Wukong. He is so deceptively tanky. The Cyclones are just ripping through Phoenix. And this will be Mountain Soul. Once again, option 12. They navigate the fight so beautifully. Yeah. Um, you know, Huge, Huge really is the target here um, they sh that they should be killing. He's he's uh, got a 700 gold shutdown. Um, the baby cage is just shutting the entire entirety of Phoenix down. Uh, they really need to kill that man. But it's so hard to do. He's been playing it really well. He's only as the, uh, the eternal ultimate um, on Malphite. Um, put the baby cage up, stopped any sort of engage there, and just kind of kited backwards throwing things out in. I mean, they won that fight easily. Yeah, it really wasn't even close. I mean, once the initial engage tools were used by Phoenix, they, they had no more bullets in the chamber. And that just meant that Godzilla could go full uh, full severe weather with that cyclone. Yeah, and Viger's really good as an anti-engage uh, champion, you know, with with the uh, cage. Of course. Um, that's that's kind of what I was looking for um, from option 12. Uh, and I again, I, I think they should just ban Viger next game. Uh, Phoenix should. It's just too good. Now let me ask you, between the Viger or the Wukong, are you still saying Viger? If you could only ban one. I would still say Vygar, I think. Um, he, he is single-handedly, with one ability, shutting down Phoenix's Kong, basically. Sure. Wukong's annoying, uh, and Wukong got ahead. He's really strong, but, uh, you know, imagine the cage wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. And people could follow up on Eternals uh, going in. Um, you know, like, Gregosaurus can't get into range. Alpha, of course, has a little bit of, you know, range with the autos and stuff, but really, he can't walk up either, so... It's just too tough for them to complete a team fight. Like, look, look at the cage right there. Yeah, Eternal goes in, but Huge pops that Zonia's right away. Great of Odin is really alone in the back line here. Takes down Peach, though. Eventually goes down, but kill two already. Got Eternal really, really low. Slayton in the back line. Alonzi's just trying to run him down, but he will go down to the auto attacks of Prowler. Alpha's just in the Nexus trying to fire away, but the damage is shrugged off. And option 12, after a really bit of a slow start, they come back strong, dominate the last two-thirds of that game and take a 1-0 series lead here in the semifinals of the GMA Community Cup. So far, really proud of how both teams kind of laid everything on the line there and just made it an absolute bloodbath. Unfortunately, Phoenix, you know, falling that game, but they had a lot of redeeming qualities. Yeah, it looked like I mean, Phoenix, they got off to a, a pretty solid start, I think. And then maybe there was just a couple instances where I think the, the Rift Herald steal is one of the biggest uh, momentum changers that I remember. Yeah. So let's yeah, see. that's kind of where it started. Uh, the Drake fight as well. Absolutely. I think yeah. option 12 won. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. The damage to champions, it doesn't look that dominant for for option 12 you know at, like every all the leaders are hovering around fifteen thousand, but just more effective damage 
on the side of option 12. They were doing that damage in more important situations. Vision scores, yeah. uh, pretty good from both Peach and Prowler, who was uh, basically the support here in this game. So, any thoughts yeah. before we uh, head into game two? Um, Ban Viger, honestly. <laughs> like, that <laughs> that champ is busted. Uh, but no, like, Phoenix did pretty good. Um, you know, if they had, if they had pushed their their early lead and not in a like an over aggressive way, I guess. Um, you know, Alonzi going in for an attempted smite steal at ten percent HP. I mean, if you get it, great. But like, really, he was just kind of giving him a free kill. Um, you know, they had already lost the fight. Like, you don't need to go for that when you're ahead. Um, you know, just kind of cut your losses. Like, sure, not everything has to be a fight. Um, you know, they really needed Malphite and Sedwani to get a bit tankier so that they could fight uh, Wukong and Hecarim toe-to-toe -to -toe and Diana. Um, but they didn't. And, you know, Viger popped off and was able to just shred through the tanks like they were like they were just carries, like they weren't building <laughs> stats. So, um, yeah, yes, yeah, really unfortunate. But, you know, maybe, maybe just, uh, you know, run it back. Uh, ban Viger, of course. And then... <laughs> Just, Run just play a little minus, bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Play it. Play right. a little bit more cautiously with your lead. Sure. I think they they could win that game. All right. Well, we'll see if the Vigar, the Wukong, what uh, if they get banned? What else might change as we head into game two? We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 